The reason why I say it confuses me is because in America we usually eat dessert food for breakfast. Is there any explanation, you know, behind that? But everything else that people consider to be, you know, American cuisine has its roots somewhere else. I don't even know cinnamon buns that come from heaven. Yes, it, they're too yeah, good. That is, that is they're the too good. Ones. So, <laughs> and are you seriously gonna make me eat and drink all of this? This is all for you. Okay. I've I've had it. I've had everything. Give me a second. Before. I think I need to do a little bit cardio. Yeah. I need to I lose. Say, jump, <laughs> to, jump up and I'm down. I'm gonna make up bit. the cardio I'm gonna eat today. I don't know why. Okay. How am I gonna eat this burger? How am I gonna do it? All right, everybody. Uh, today's guest is uh, a real American. Uh, his name is Brad. He's a co-founder here at Eddie's. Thank you very much, We Great to have you. Welcome to Eddie's. Right. I've got a feast for you ahead. I can't wait. Let's go. All right, so today Brad will show me one of his uh, favorite tricks in the kitchen, which is I know that I, I love omelet and the omelet is something very, it screams America. So tell me what's the secret that I can make a fluffy omelet? Okay, so usually when you're making an omelet, yeah. as you know, it consists of eggs and milk seasoning and ingredients. Yes, which is what we have here. We have eggs and everything here. If you're really looking to impress people and make a special <laughs> omelet, yeah. there is a secret ingredient that you can use and that secret ingredient is right in this bowl here. What is this? It's like murder milk. What do you think it is? I know. It's what does it smell like? Murder milk. No? Mm. I don't know what it smells like. It smells like pancake. That's exactly pancake mix. Right. right. So, if you're really looking to impress, uh -huh. all you need to do is add about a quarter cup of pancake batter right. to in, your omelet. Your so what you're gonna do is mix the eggs as you usually would. Okay. Just whisk away. Do you wanna put, go ahead. Okay. Is it time to put the, uh, the pancake mix in? Let's put the pancake batter in there. That's okay. about 75 ml of pancake batter. Fantastic. I would put a little butter in your pan. I got some melted butter here. Yep. Pan's right. nice and hot. There we go. Pour it in. Slowly. Slowly. And now you're just going to make the omelet exactly as you would make it. So you're probably going to want to wait a little while and then you can add your ingredients anytime you want. All right. Here we have some cheese and some hams. Yep, this is a very simple omelet. Let's make it cheesy. <laughs> and can I get a little salt and pepper? That's Time beautiful. A, uh, you, are, you are a pro. I cannot try the secret that Brad has taught me to make my omelet for beer. It smells like pancake. Yeah. Mmm. Yep. Super fluffy. Look, super. If you if you if you want to hire me, yes, I'm I'm currently unemployed. Please okay. hire me. I can okay. make I can make okay. your own less special. You need you need to get here at six a.m. Is that going to be a problem? Yes, sir. No okay. Yes. All right. I'm Fantastic. <laughs> You're hired. I'm hired. Thank you. Now let's get. I go. I want to eat your food first. All right. I want to taste Looking food. forward to bringing you through the menu. Let's go. Let's okay. Do it. All right, Brad, what I'm seeing here is a, I don't know how to call this. This is a, a, a platter. This is a breakfast platter. Please tell me what's, what's in this. So this is our breakfast sharing platter for two. So I'd call it a quintessential American breakfast. And right. It starts, the center is the biscuit and gravy. Biscuits and gravy are really a Southern breakfast item going back to the early 1800s. Uh -huh. And it was kind of a staple of an American breakfast in the South. And here Got are cinnamon buns. Eddie's world famous cinnamon buns. Whenever I mention about American breakfast, this is sometimes it confuses me in a way that you can see there's pancakes here, you can see there's cinnamon buns here. These are the type of food that usually eaten as a dessert. The reason why I say it confuses me is because in America we usually eat dessert food for breakfast. Is there any explanation, you know, behind that? I think the American breakfast, it's, it's very much features more sweet items 
um, along with the savory so you get the mix of the two so you can eat more because if you're only <laughs> eating savory items eventually you get tired of eating those items right yeah and so it really confuses a lot of people. Why are you going to have a savory pork gravy with biscuits? So yeah. we have to spend a lot of time explaining to our guests what it is. And once they try it, generally, they really enjoy the food. So it's been a very positive experience over the past five years since we opened our first Eddie's in Taudian. Okay, but before we, we dig deeper into the food and then also the, the style of hospitality, I want to mention the portion. I mean, the Vietnamese, we Vietnamese, we're not used to huge, gigantic portion and high in calories like this. I mean, we, we Vietnamese, we eat, uh, I would say relatively, the, the meals are very light. So, did you have anything that you need to adapt when you come here to Vietnam and then you're trying to, you're trying to bring this American portion here to the Vietnamese eaters? So it's a great question. Yeah. What, what we really say, it's American style food, but we do serve it in an Asian way. Uh -huh. We're really... We take a lot of care in explaining that the portions are American size, we'll mm. cut things in half, mm. we'll cut them in thirds, whatever is going to make the customer and the guests feel most comfortable, we're going to serve it that way. Mm. What I've had to do with some items, I'm not going to change the portion sizes. Oh, I can see a lot more food coming up. Uh, wow, what are those? Okay, then let me, let me get that. It looks very sexy. Now, now what I see is a beautiful sandwich here with some onion rings. What is this? So this is called a Reuben sandwich. The Reuben sandwich. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Reuben's are considered to be one of the 10 most popular sandwiches in America. Yeah. And <coughs> Reuben's are a real special item. Ham, cheese, uh, some sauce there. Yeah. So what you're looking at is corned beef. Corned beef. And corned beef is comes from brisket. So one of the things that really makes Eddie special is that we're curing and smoking our own meat here. When, when we mentioned about American food, American cuisine, it's hard for me to actually pinpoint and define what exactly American food is. Because you're, you find a lot of food here in America that, that has influence or even, you know, it's, it, it, it's being brought over from another country, you know, because America is a, it's a country of settlers. How do you think that um, the role of immigrant plays in the American food scene, that, that what it makes the American cuisine, you know, it is now today? So you're absolutely right. Mm. So it's, look, America's a melting pot and we have Native Americans and, mm. and they obviously had food and they ate and there yeah, was yeah, some yeah. influence of the Native Americans. But everything else that people consider to be, you know, American cuisine has its roots somewhere else. After World War II, everything changed in terms of the American food culture and the American food scene. Mm. And a couple influences. So one was you had, let's take pizza. So you had American servicemen stationed in Italy. They got a taste for pizza. They would in never Italy, have yeah. eaten it necessarily yeah, back yeah. in back the States, home. right? So they come back and they really love this food. And so this food that was more common in the immigrant populations then starts to gain popularity in the general population and spreads from places like right. just in New York right. all across the country, right. right? But you're right, almost every type of food I can think of has some origin in another culture. And sometimes the origin goes way back, way back. you know, and it could go back to, to Greek times or even Latin <laughs> times, right? And then each region in America kind of made that food their own. So it's not a stagnant American cuisine is far from stagnant. It's mm. constantly changing. Okay. And that's what makes it very exciting. Yeah. Also. And what if you have to name one dish that that you no know, does not have any influence from from the settlers that are, you know, that that was like heavily originally American, what would that be? It's almost it's like almost impossible to think of any food. Yeah. That is really American in origin. Mm. This next dish we're going to try here, okay, which yeah. is clam chowder. Clam chowder. Clam chowder, believe it or huh. not. Clam chowder seems to be about the only food that I could think of that, like, really has its origins in, like, America. Okay. And the story goes back to the time of 
the early colonists, mm. right? Mm. And so clams and seafood were very plentiful around New England and that area. And the story goes that the Native Americans introduced some type of seafood, seafood? stew, yeah. including clams, to the settlers. And so this dish Ooh. might just be the most original, <laughs> Amer right? Who would have ever thought, Yeah. right? That clam chowder, right? You might have thought it came from Europe. I thought it was, it was like a, a French dish that was mm. introduced to America. This, you know, I have no, I have no clue. Again, what I know about food origin stories is there's always two or three stories, right? Yeah. It's really hard to identify, like, yeah. who was the first one. We didn't have the internet, right? Exactly. You're right. You didn't have people posting on Nobody Instagram Nobody writing down in stuff. In 1920, yeah. right? And only a few, you know, there are a few things that are very clear where they came from, mm. but not many. I mean, yeah. honestly, cinnamon buns, where do you think they come from? The cinnamon buns, it turns out, were the <laughs> Swedes. Ah. But only in the 1920s and 30s. Ah. And so this is really something that came to America. Now, what did America add? America added the cream cheese, <laughs> butter, and icing sugar. Right. right. And so that was the Amer And, of course, we made them bigger. Yeah. Right? Because everything in America is it's just bigger. bigger. Right? I didn't say better, but it's bigger. Bigger. <laughs> you mentioned one funny thing is that I... Um, Ameri Americans somehow they always make things bigger and they always make things creamier mm. more milk is that a common trait is that is that is that the American appetite that they just want to eat much more they want to eat creamier it's a big country <laughs> with big people <laughs> look food trends change over time right yeah but you're right if you had to kind of describe American food, I think comfort. Mm. Right? This is one of the key components is, is comfort. Mm. And then very much meat oriented and predominantly beef. And then dairy, so butter and cheese. These are things we really have an abundance of in America. We have a lot of cows in America. And food in America up until very recently was inexpensive compared to other places in the world. Mm. And when you have inexpensive food, what happens? People tend to, to eat more. <laughs> eat much better, more, right? yeah. Is there, any, is there anything that on your menu that you know really screams out America and then it has all the characteristics, like you said, it's big, it's you know high in calories, it's very meaty. Uh, anything that you want to introduce me yeah, to? Yeah, there's. I have a special item coming soon. Yeah? We've designed something new called the barnyard burger. Why is it called the barnyard burger? Because it has just about everything we could imagine uh -huh. from a barnyard on uh -huh. a burger. Uh -huh. All right, I don't know, I'm lost of words. I don't know how to call this thing. It's like a tower. It's, I don't know, what is this? So this is the barnyard burger. Right. And as I said, so it starts with crispy chicken, cheese, flame grilled chicken filet, I can see some beef patty, I can see some bacon, some... some hash brown. Some hash brown, some eggs. eggs. A little more cheese, some bacon, and some lettuce, buns. tomato. Right. I see some drinks here. Uh, I, I can see some milkshake, but there, there's some bacon on top. Right, so this is one of our really famous, of our famous milkshakes. Uh -huh. And this is our bacon maple milkshake. And here okay. again, you know how we are talking about breakfast, how you're surprised, like... There's sweet things for breakfast. Yeah. Somehow or another, we like that sweet, savory uh -huh. thing. Okay. And sometimes putting things together that you would never expect to blend well together, they do really work well. Mm -hmm. So Eddie's isn't Eddie's, you know, Eddie's <laughs> is not Eddie's without milkshake. And are you seriously gonna make me eat and drink all of this? This is all for you. Okay. I've, I've had it. I've had everything on Give the menu Give me a second. Before. I think I need to do a little bit cardio. Yeah. I need to I was gonna say, jump, <laughs> to jump up and down I'm going to make up bit. the cardio I'm going to eat today. I don't know why. Okay. How am I going to eat this burger? How am I going to do it? Please go ahead this. and grab an onion ring. You're a fan. I'm a, I am a fan. All onion right. Rings. Okay, there cheers. we go. Cheers to onion All right. Rings. Cheers, cheers, man. Cheers. Let's go. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time eating this. Mm. Oh yeah. 
You got some flavors in there, right? Oh yeah. I am surprised with the size of my mouth that I can open this big to eat this gigantic thing. I'm impressed. Um, yeah. That is the taste of my childhood, right there. Just for the audience at home watching Ala, uh, this is what I'm doing for you, okay? I'm risking my health. I might be having a heart attack soon after this meal. <laughs> this, is, this is what I'm doing for you, okay? So love me, watch, watch it more, thank you. There's one thing that I couldn't keep myself asking you is that um, whenever I'm looking at American food, I always think it of very oily, very high in calorie, and most of it is like fry, grill, and stuff. But recently, there's a trend that people wanted to eat healthier. They want to eat something that's you know giving them they care more about the health in general. So, do you think that is 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 that a problem for for you as a restaurant owner? And that, and, and then do you think that it somehow it will change the American cuisine in the future? So I think it creates opportunities. Mm -hmm. I think, <clears throat> you know, our menu isn't one menu, it's three menus, right? So we have the Eddie's menu, which is the standard menu, the Shelly's menu, which is a vegetarian menu. Ah, okay. And then we have our American Chinese menu, Eddie's Walk. Right? right. And on each menu, I always tell people at Eddie's, you can eat as healthy as you want, or it can be your cheat day place. I want to talk about something that um, it's your 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 motto here. It's the the diner slash deli thing. What is it really? You know, what is it? What is the diner? You know, like you know, hospitality that you're trying to aim at. I mean, you mentioned briefly about it. Can you tell me a little bit more? Sure. I think first we can uh, define like so. Eddie's is actually three different restaurants uh -huh. in one place. Uh -huh. so, it looks like a diner, right? Yeah. This is classic 50s. Exactly. Red booze, Red stainless booze, steel, you know. check floor. Yeah. This is total diner style. Yeah. Right? Diners were something that started in the late 1800s and they were originally like the original food cart. Mm. So they were horse-drawn carriages that would pull up in front of a factory in the late 1800s, yeah. right? And the workers would come out and it was just inexpensive food to feed the workers. It then kind of morphed into pre-manufactured restaurants, mm. mostly being built in the Mideast. Those are the ones that we think about with the stainless steel exteriors and the neon and the beautiful windows. So those are manufactured restaurants. And again, diner culture, kind of the heyday of diner culture in America was the 50s and 60s. Again, going back to more automotive people mm. on the road, right? Yeah. Looking for a quick place to eat, yeah. comfort, comfort food. Yeah friendly service yeah so this idea of hospitality and friendly service is really an american style and let me explain what, what the difference mean? is yeah. between service and hospitality mm. okay good service to me means your orders taken right the food's delivered in a reasonable amount of time mm -hmm. you know it's served in a friendly enough way mm -hmm. right and you're happy it doesn't interfere with your meal mm -hmm. hospitality the way we define hospitality is a warm, friendly experience that you're going to remember. Mm. And that might just bring you back. Talking about food, even though I'm so full right now, but I still want to try, I want to taste some of your uh, your food that you mentioned is the... the Eddie's Walk. Eddie's Walk. American okay. Chinese. Let's Great. get to it. Okay. Let's go. All right. So we're uh, next to uh, what you have to offer me. What is this? This is uh, Chinese American food. Yeah, I know. It seems what? kind of strange, right? Right. Yeah. Some fried rice. Please, some please help rice. yourself. And right. This is, uh, is a kung pao little chicken? kung pao chicken, kung right? Pao chicken. That like <clears throat> the Americans tend to eat their Chinese food with steamed rice. Mm. And you know, there's something like in the states. There's like between Chinese restaurants and American Chinese restaurants, there's like 40,000 Chinese and American Chinese restaurants in the States. That's like one for every 8,000 people. It's still authentically American, truly American food. It's been like the Chinese brought it to America in the 1840s, around the time of the gold rush. Mm. And this is the history of American Chinese food. Right. And then it like, so, Turn of the century, again, early 1900s, Chinese food started to become more Americanized. If you were kind of like a worker yeah. and didn't have a lot of money, yeah. 
he couldn't necessarily afford to go eat at Cat's Deli. Mm. That was expensive back then, right? right? And not every restaurant would accept immigrants. Chinese restaurants, everybody's welcome. <laughs> Tasty, exotic food that doesn't cost a lot of money and a welcoming environment. Mm. And this is the story of how American Chinese food was born. Grew, yeah. Right. Okay, there's one thing I want to ask you to conclude today's um, talk is that I'm very fascinated in one of the terms that we have used is that American nice food. It's not only just, you know, the food in America, they, they're, they've been brought over, it's been, you know, influenced by other countries, by the settlers, you know, by the, uh, the soldiers coming back, but it does Americanized food meaning that sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't change the recipe, but it invented a new dish, per se, Kung Pao chicken. You cannot find Kung Pao chicken anywhere in China, even in Hong Kong, Taiwan, anywhere. It, it, this is purely an American dish. So, yeah. so, if, so what do you think about that? So what do you think about this term of Americanized food? Well, it makes it more palatable to a wider audience. Mm. I mean, this is what, this is really listening to the customer. Right. Okay, last dish, dessert, yep. let's go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, everybody, this is the last dish I'm going to have today at Eddie's. Uh, you know what people say, you always have room for dessert. So this is it. This is the, the cheesecake. Right. This, this looks is a New York cheesecake. New York cheesecake. And there's, cake, there's a difference, right? Uh -huh. So New York cheesecake is a baked cheesecake. Uh-huh. Mm. It's a richer, creamier cheesecake, yeah. and one of the requirements, it has a graham cracker crust. Mm. Okay, graham crackers don't exist in Vietnam, mm. which means that, you know, we have our own bakery, right? So we bake all our own buns, bread, everything's baked in-house. Uh, well, thank you, Brad. If there's something to, I learned today is that even though it's hard for people to pinpoint, to define what exactly American cuisine is, but you can see see it at this way is that American food is it's got a little bit of everything so it's a diverse you know is it it got influences coming from different countries coming from different regions and then the American they Americanized it and that is the beauty of American food yeah I think that's that's <coughs> well said it's mm. a huge country yeah there's something for everybody in yeah. America right yeah this is it this is it well, thanks for joining me. Well, thank you, Brad. Yeah. I definitely I had a feast today. I wouldn't say I had a meal. I had a feast today. I'm full, That's and good. I learned so much more about American food. And for sure, we'll come back, you know, good. to Eddie's. And All right, thank you, Brad. Yeah, pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Yeah.